Okay, what are some of the arguments, moral arguments for and against uh, euthanasia? Uh, first of all, we'll start with arguments against euthanasia. Uh, if killing is intrinsically wrong, which we argued in chapter eight, then euthanasia would be wrong too. Uh, it's, an act, it's a form of killing, it's an intentional kind of killing, um, so that would make it wrong. Um, people also all point out that uh, killing is contrary to the Hippocratic Oath. Now, of course, we have been arguing that the Hippocratic Oath is not the law, but you could broaden that to being saying contrary to the medical tradition or the goals of medicine. Uh, medicine is not is not here to kill people. It's here to heal, to preserve life, to promote health, to relieve suffering. And even if there's disagreement about which one of those, none of those seem to be automatically imply that they would also include killing the patient uh, in the situations that the patient would want it. A third argument would be that euthanasia would be a public and legal disaster. Um, it would reverse uh, our move in our society away from private killings, from letting people take revenge killings. We've tried to stop those. It would sort of return us back to that situation. Um, and it would probably not be the uh, positive thing that people often argue that it would be. I mean, in the situation of abortion, it wasn't a positive thing to bring that into our society. We're still arguing over abortion to this day, and it's been around for over 50 years. Um, how about the other side? Main arguments defending euthanasia. Uh, there are basically two kinds. Arguments that defend euthanasia because somebody has chosen it, so these would be autonomy arguments, and arguments that defend euthanasia because it is in the interest of the patient. And um, Tony Hope has a kind of an interesting argument um, using these two, defending that doctors would have an obligation to euthanize their patients in certain situations. Um, we'll look at that separately. That's a pretty uh, extreme kind of argument, not one that people would expect. Usually people think, people defending euthanasia are arguing it, arguing for it as an option, not as a requirement of medical um, practice. Um, let's start with the second one first. So here we have the argument from suffering, a patient interest argument. It works something like this. The doctor's moral obligation is to care for their patients, and that implies uh, this argument goes a moral obligation to kill their patient if the patient is suffering. I don't think this is a very, I don't think any of these arguments are very strong, but this one's particularly weak for a couple of particular reasons. Um, they include, first of all, uh, if there's an obligation to care for somebody who's suffering, and certainly there probably, there needs to be, right? There's an obligation to care. It's only a general obligation. Um, it implies that the doctor should do something about his or her patient's suffering, um, but it doesn't imply that the doctor should kill them. Um, there are lots of ways to deal with suffering, okay? And if killing is at all justified, it would have to be in very extreme cases, cases of extreme suffering, suffering that is horrible and ineradicable and can't be stopped in any other way. Um, it's simply got to be a last resort, not a first resort. And finally, uh, erasing somebody from existence, uh, although it does solve the problem, it's a pretty extreme response to suffering. It doesn't address the problem at all. The problem is not the patient's life, but the patient's suffering. If the patient wants their life to end, well, that's suicidal. So that should be dealt with uh, directly. Um, it, it, and it's no longer suffering that's the problem here. It's, it's, the, it's the suffering life. Um, relevant to any objection to treatment here would be how the relationship of responsibility is established. This is an important point. In Hippocratic ethics, uh, the physician agrees to accept the person as a patient. That's when the relationship begins. And, the, um, and that's why the Hippocratic Oath spells out the things that a doctor will do and won't do for their patient. In Judeo-Christian ethics, uh, the patient accepts the professional's offer of commitment and reciprocates the commitment. So the, the, the doctor tells the patient what they can do, the patient accepts that, the patient initiates it. So the patient may not even been expecting um, euthanasia as an option there, and it may not have been given. Um, this is why 
euthanasia advocates move to the political sphere because making it illegal just rules it out as a possible option at all. So they want it to be at least included in the options that the patient will then agree to as part of the doctor-patient relationship. Of course, is it ever in someone's interest to die? We'll have to look at this a little more carefully when we look at Tony Hope's arguments. Okay, the second kind of argument for euthanasia would be an argument from choice. Here the reasoning would work something like this, that the patient has the moral option to request to be killed, um, which would be some kind of a right to die. And notice you've got to say moral option. You can't say the patient has the right, the requirement to request it in certain circumstances. People don't want to go that far. So they want to say it should be an option. Um, and then the principle of respect for autonomy obligates the doctor to honor that request. Therefore, a patient would have a right to request euthanasia and the doctor would have the obligation to provide it. Um, this has its own weaknesses. It's highly contentious to claim that the autonomous choices are not limited by moral considerations. Can you legitimately choose something evil? So here you need to, first of all, figure out whether killing and asking somebody to kill you is a moral request. Um, if killing is wrong, um, intrinsically, then it's an immoral request. So it's the same thing as asking someone to help you steal, to hurt somebody else. Um, yeah, you can autonomously ask that, but people don't have to honor those requests because they're immoral. It is even more contentious to claim that your autonomy gives someone else the obligation to aid you in doing something morally wrong. Um, um, this is the difference between a refusal and a request. And, and autonomy has traditionally been considered a negative right. Uh, so uh, people's refusal should be honored, but their requests require further justification to become involved. So it's it's the idea of, you know, if I say, don't touch me, leave me alone, you should honor that. I mean, you have to go out of your way to touch me. But if I say, can you help me do this or that? Well, you don't, you can't justify doing that just simply because you've been asked. You have to have further and, and extraneous reasons justifying uh, you're becoming involved in the request. So that's an important point. A lot of people think on the basis of being re autonomously requested, the doctor has a duty to perform euthanasia. No, uh, the doctor then can consider, do I have any obligations that would justify or require that I honor the request that I've been given? In a typical doctor relation, doctor-patient relationship, um, the patient has already contracted with the doctor to cure uh, their medical condition. So um, there wouldn't typically be this sort of a, of a, of a deliberation. Um, and what sorts of reasons might justify a doctor becoming involved in a patient's request to kill themselves? Well, that sounds like it's back to their suffering, right? But that takes us back to the previous argument, which we've already seen has been kind of weak. Are there better arguments for euthanasia? I think there are at least two. You could, an argument from self-determination where we would argue not that we have this right to make these choices, but we have a right to determine the direction and the course of our lives. And here you would argue that that might include the time and place of our deaths. Uh, but there would be need more to be said than simply saying it. An argument from individual well-being might also um, justify that. If we can morally forego life-sustaining treatment, um, then we might be accepting the reason that the best life possible is possibly worse than no life at all. The same reasoning might underlie euthanasia. But there are a few differences that would need to be spelled out here. So I don't, I mean these to sort of give you some sense. How might people argue? Um, both of them would set decision-making capacity as a baseline, and neither argument entitles the patient to compel physicians to act contrary to their values. So both of them still have the problem of the physician who says, I don't want to do that. And what do you do at that point? You look like you're at an impasse. 